Hi guys, thanks for joining me for the in-depth look at the 4G personal tracker. Um, so I've got all the devices, uh, all the devices charged up. I've also got my SIM card with me, and uh, I've got my multi rider just just to show you guys a little handy feature the unit has. Um, so make sure the unit's off when you insert or remove the SIM card, and then you want to turn the unit over. So we're just going to flip the unit over. Um, I'm going to pop off the panel from there's a little cutout just down here. So I'm going to get my nail under there, take off the back panel. Uh, the reason I got my multi rider out is because you can actually fit it in the back. We'll install the SIM and I'll show you what I mean. So go grab your nano SIM. So this uses the smallest SIM card possible. So rather than the other two GPS trackers, um, this one actually uses the, the tiniest version of it. You then want to install it with the cutout facing down towards the barcode down here. Um, just like so. So you want to slide in like that and then just push it all the way so it can't go any further. Um, we would suggest going with uh, Telstra Optus, um, purely based on range and uh, pricing on, on, their, on their plans and stuff like that. It makes it a lot easier to communicate with the tracker and run it at a lower cost. Um, once your SIM card's all insert, sort of inserted, you can then go ahead and reinstall the ID card if you want to, or for today's video, I'm gonna put my multi-rider on the back just to show you how easy it is to install. You then wanna make sure that when you install the cutout, you put the, cut, the little triangle cutout back on the bottom left-hand side of the unit push it all down so it's all nice and flat, and then you're good to go. So now we want to turn the unit over, and we turn it on by holding down the SOS button. And then we can go ahead and grab our phone and send it uh, three commands to get it up and running. So I'll just get out my phone, and um, we'll get the commands ready to be sent to it. Oh, that boots up. So as you can see, it's an Android-based operating system on it, which makes it nice and easy to use. Um, you do have the option of... Um, accessing a couple of different menus and messaging from here, although the keypad can be quite short. So um, do bear that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to punch in the phone number for the tracker. Uh, and we're just going to send it a, a couple of uh, a couple of simple commands. So again, these commands are going to, uh, the first command is going to differentiate between the network that you're using. Um, for us, we're using Telstra, so the the command will be in all capitals. It'll be A P N, comma uh, Telstra dot internet, and then you want to make sure you put a hashtag at the end and send. <clears throat> now, again, if the unit doesn't have call and data credit, um, you won't be able to take advantage of everything. You can see that it responds pretty quickly, and you want to make sure you have a. a uh, SIM card with call and data credit because one of the unit's features is obviously the two-way calling communication and the SOS notifications. So do make sure that when you do go and get a SIM card that you make sure it's got call and data credit exactly like you would for a mobile phone. Uh, the next command we want to send it is the server command so we can work with the track solid app. So we'll go server, comma, one, comma, GPS dev. dot track solid dot com comma two one one zero zero comma zero hash I want to send that so that these three basic commands are also the same ones that you send for the um, hardwired uh, GPS tracker we do as well, and it uses the same tracking platform as well. So it makes it nice and easy to get it set up and um, super reliable and easy to use. Uh, the last command we want to send it is just the GPRS set command. So it's GPRS set hash send. And the Sorry, that was the second last command. The final command we want to send it is the G timer command. So this activates the tracking property of the unit um, and, it, and it will ping once every three minutes. So that command is G timer comma three hash send. So now that the tracker update every three minutes and everything's set. Now what you can do is once you've got all those responses from the unit, you can go ahead and go into the track solid app. So I'll just grab, I'll show you what it looks like and um, then we'll do the login. So the app itself um, is just that little guy there. So if you go to the Apple store or the Play store, uh, we just want to search track solid. So just wait for it to boot up.
just make it sure it's all one word when you search for it. And then you want to choose that guy there. So I'll just go back to the app. So track solid. Um, when you do purchase one of these units, we will send you an email asking um, if you want to confirm your email address and sending you your um, unique login and all the rest of it for it. So if you don't have that um, and you get shipped to you, please contact us via email so we can send that out to you. So once you've got your login name and your password, you simply hit login. And it'll show you where your tracker was. So um, pretty close to where we are at the moment. I mean, we are inside our warehouse, so it is a little off. Um, if we hit on the, so the home button, which is where it loads up all the time, will immediately load you up to show you where the, the tracker is. If we hit list at the bottom of the page here, we can then see the, the trackers online and we can go to detail, which is where you'll do a lot of the modifications to it. Sorry, not detail. So you can add in here, you could change the name of it. So I've already changed it from um, its model number to personal 4G. Um, you can see the IME, you can add in the phone number if you want to, all that sort of cool stuff. Um, if we click on the three little dots and we click on uh, command, this is where you allocate a lot of the phone numbers to it, so the emergency contacts as well as the allow contacts list. So the first option you have is your SOS number and here you can add in your three emergency contacts. So by either pressing the SOS button, it'll contact all three um, in sequential order or if you pressed any of the numbers on the GPS tracker, you'd contact each one of those individually. So if you wanted to have a um, quick call to someone, you could just simply press number one, it would call the first SOS number and so on and so forth. Um, same with the family numbers, those, those three family emergency numbers. You also have a low battery alarm that you can have uh, sent via SMS to you. So when the unit dips below, I think it's 10%, it'll um, let you know. Um, your SOS alarm, you can have um, three different options as far as how it contacts you. Um, platform only, so through the app only. Platform and SMS, or platform, SMS and call. And then platform and call. Uh, with the phone numbers, do make sure that when you are adding a phone number like I have at the top here, um, you put the 6-1 instead of the 0. Um, for whatever reason, the software doesn't recognise the 0 and you can have issues with it not calling the correct number. So do make sure you put in the 6-1 instead of the 0. So under whitelist, you can add in um, as uh, 15 different names and phone numbers that the phone would be allowed to con that the tracker would be allowed to contact. So, for instance, if I was to add in work and and the number uh, and that'll all be updated um, and you can do that for up to 15 different numbers you can also go into GPS working hour if you want to and if you wanted to adjust specific time periods that it was on or off, so say that it was going to school or something like that, you can adjust all that through there. And then you've also got your user-defined um, commands, which generally if you've set it up using the, those four commands that we showed you at the beginning of the, vi the video, then you should be good to go and you shouldn't need to access that. So again, if I grab the device now and I go to my contacts list, phone, now we've got work, so I can call if I needed to. So it's that easy to get it all set up. Um, you can also go and set up uh, GPS uh, geofences if you want to. So you've got, uh, where are we? Boop. Uh, geofence. Add in the top right corner. And then you could add a, a geofence around a particular area. I mean, I'd suggest setting it so it's set to about uh, 500 metres. Uh, 1609, 700, so about there. And then you've got the option at the bottom here to have it so it alerts you on entering or exiting that area. So you've got the option of either or or both, it's completely up to you. Um, and then you just go ahead and save it and away you go. Uh, so it makes it nice and easy for you. You've also got um, all your alerts on here. So this would be all the alerts that the, user, that the device is registered. So all the boot up and power off and power cutoff alerts that we've been testing. Um, along with, if you want to see where it had been, you can go to playback. And if I go yesterday and press OK and press play, see it do a little bit of a jog around. So I had moved a couple of spots yesterday. Um, but yeah, that's how easy it is to track where it's going to go and gives you all your speed and all the rest of it down the bottom there as well. So it makes it nice and easy to get tracking. 
As I said, guys, the Track Solid app is supplied with it. There's no ongoing cost to access it. The only ongoing cost to you would be the cost of the uh, SIM card itself. And like I said, we'd suggest going with Telstra Optus. Do make sure that uh, you get a SIM card with call and data credit. And if you have any questions or queries, please don't hesitate to send us an email or give us a call. Thanks for joining us, guys, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.